back? Are we what? Are we back? What do you mean? Are we back in on the podcast? We never left. Oh, we just changed clothes. <laughs> Very we just quickly. changed clothes. YouTube's in. They'll on a never joke. know. YouTube's in on a joke that nobody else is. <laughs> yeah, totally good seamless. For, good for you guys. Anyway, All right, where, where were we? Uh, I was sharing an analogy that uh, is not true, and you shouldn't say. Yeah, yeah. After about <laughs> after about three dozen emails about that analogy, uh, no, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. Yeah. Speaking of negative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of, Megan, of negative, speaking of negative influences analogies. impact. So. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, let's that you guys were talking yeah, about. Yeah, just in case people just jump back in, let's kind of uh talk about where we were. So last week we began a discussion with the four of us on uh actually a question that a listener sent in about purity culture, um kind of the role that it played in the church whenever we were coming up and kind of learning um just about sex and sexuality and 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 w- how it kind of warped that and Today, I think where we want to go in following up that discussion after talking about our own experiences, it's talking about um, kind of the side effects of that and and how um, how that affects people on the other side of that now. Um, and so I think it would be good for us to jump in and let's talk a little bit more about the... Ne- there was a negative connotation around it last week, but let's talk more about the negative side effects that come or came with this hard push towards purity culture in the church and even in schools. Um, yeah. yeah, I think um, we touched on this a little bit in the first episode, just um, the way that girls were shamed versus the way that guys were or were not shamed. Mm. Um, but I do believe that shame is the biggest thing here Yeah, as far as a negative side effect and the way that that shame carries over into life, into your life, if life. you into life, <laughs> into life, we into heard lives, it. my okay. Mississippi showing, <laughs> okay. um, into our lives, and then, or the fear of the shame. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you if you were one of us that did not live that lifestyle and had that experience, then the fear of the shame that you might endure, or the shame your parents might feel. Yeah, yeah, I think that there are a couple of levels to it. There are levels to this. You know, shame uh, levels. Yeah, level one. <laughs> So I, I think there are levels to it. There is the there is that you have to deal with your family and and um, their reputation, all of that. But I guess I'm curious, why do you two think that it is that shame hits on a different level for females than it does men? Um, we may have said it last week in the last episode, but for guys, it's it's almost looked at as particularly at that age as a conquest. It is not. There's not a whole lot of shame associated mm-hmm. um, with you know. Con- any of that <laughs> I mean, really though that's that 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 is that is kind of what i came up in and yeah. so why do you think that that is so unbalanced for women coming of age i guess yeah i don't know because it's, it's still like that in the south kind of it mm-hmm. it really is it's and it's a very cultural thing like yeah. the woman is the prized possession yeah and and so if she's if she is um faulted or if she's if she's not perfect, if she makes that choice to do those things and everybody knows, then oh, she's no good anymore. Like yeah. she's damaged. Yeah, damaged goods. Shame, shame on her. What do you think, Avery? Why do you did you did you ever get a sense of why that was? Why is why is that so unbalanced? Um, I mean, even if you look at like mean words for um like girls, uh. They, they don't, they don't like witch. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> harlot like other words. I don't know. Like if you think about it, there just really aren't that those types of words. There's no male, there's no male equivalent. Like well, I, yeah. think, I think I would it's disagree just, that it's lopsided. I think it's just totally different shame. Cause I think the flip side for men is that it, you get called like a, for to not say the worst version of this word, a wimp almost for not wanting to have sex. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Which is, that's just as traumatizing within itself. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But anyway, I just yeah. to clarify that. I also think like the way that the church, or at least the way that I, like my experience, like would they, they focus so hard on guys dealing with porn and so hard on girls with modesty. I mm. think it, it leaves out it's isolating for girls that do struggle with porn. Cause like that was never ever talked about. It was almost assumed that it was only guys. And it's, it's also leaving out the fact that girls are just as attracted to guys as guys are to girls. 
too. Well, I don't know if I believe that, but uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> my experience does not dictate that. But yeah, you're right. It's it's odd. You're 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 right though that you bring up a good point, Chase, in that it was almost if you look at even the way that the church handled at that point in time for guys, it was almost more encouraged for you to actually sleep with a girl than to look at porn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is ridiculous yeah. looking yeah. back. That is insane to me. Mm -hmm. And that shame carries on going forward. We talked we talked about it a little bit last week, looking forward to marriage and all those things and how it can kind of skew some really great things. But I think one of the biggest things that it skews is people's perception of the church. And we can kind of chase this rabbit for a little while. Um, I was telling you guys recently that I have some some close friends, some good friends that I that I knew from home back in Arkansas, um, who I love a lot. I actually lived with him for a while, and they recently have moved in together. Sweet couple, they're they're fantastic people. Want to be in church, but they're terrified to go to church because they're not married and they're planning on getting married. And they're like, well, we're we're just not there yet, so we don't really want to hear it from church people until we figure that part of it out. And that's mm -hmm. such a that is such a scary thing for the church mm -hmm. because I think that most churches would be like, yeah, all right, I get that. Go right. fix that and then come and see us and we'll tell you, you know, uh -huh. what you need to know. How terrifying is that? Yeah. yeah. That's, well, also, like, if you want to make this the most complicated that you can, like, how does the Bible even define marriage? Because it's not the way we do it. Yeah. Right. It's not the ceremony beside the lake. It's a, yeah. No. It's a completely different context. Yeah. Yeah. It's a completely different context. So it's, it's like it's almost bat bleep crazy that they yeah. feel shame yeah. to not in so much that they don't want to go to church for well, fear of what the reality say. is. If you're looking at the biblical context, they would have been getting married at the age that most of our listeners' kids are. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's just that's just the reality of it. And so you are asking somebody who is looking from a biblical perspective, they're looking at the Bible and they're dealing with all of these struggles that both men and women deal with mm -hmm. for years past the time right. when the, you know, the original authors were planning on them getting married yes. in that context. Um which we could we could run down that for that's a whole different yeah that's a whole yeah. that's a whole different thing. I would like to hone in on this shame piece. Yeah, though. what do you think the church can do to correct that? I think that vertical has gone a long ways to correcting that sort of mm -hmm. thing, and it's I say this often um, about a lot of different issues, but it's one reason that I like working at vertical and I wanted to work here is I feel like they handled that appropriately uh, in loving people, you know, more than they pick out you know, those problems, but what is vertical church's approach to that? Yeah, I think um, hearing hearing what you said about your friends, again, it breaks my heart for them that they feel like they can't come to church. Um, even I more wish so, they lived here. Yeah, yeah. I really wish they lived here. Even more so just because when I first came to church here, Mike was with me and our three oldest children, and but we were not married and we were living together. Yeah. And that was never looked down upon that I knew of. Um, well, and Mike didn't accept Christ until right, yeah. right. He grew up in a Catholic home, and um, well, I would say his his family for generations has been Catholic. He wasn't really involved in church even, sure. And so, but he was very interested in God and, and the idea of things. And so, we came to it was Life Bridge at the time, invited by Philip, the lead pastor, who just loved on us. Yeah. And Mike saw something different. He saw that yeah, we were in this situation, and we were doing the best we could for our kids. And people loved us still. And there were other people just like us that had messed up and, and done things that society and church culture would say were bad, but they were accepted here and they were doing things. And so he accepted Christ and we got married a month and a half later. And the church actually in here, it showed us the right way to do things and not just by saying, you have to act right. If you're going to follow Jesus, you have to do these things. Here's the rules. It was like, no, let's put you with a group of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this group of people will show you love and show you the way that Jesus would love you. And here's all of this information if you want to grow and learn and here are things that you can do to get involved. Yeah. And so um, it just breaks my heart to feel that somebody could be missing out on that. It, it makes me It makes me furious. It makes me so... I don't know, that that makes me more angry at the modern day church than most things is this horrible idea that people have to fix themselves before they're allowed to enter the door because it's the exact opposite 
of what Jesus's ministry looked like. Mm -hmm. We see so often in scripture where Jesus approaches the most broken people, including the 12 guys that he spent the most time with, went out of his way to find the most broken people because he knew that once their lives were changed, that like their lives were changed. It didn't, it didn't take anything more than them knowing Jesus for their lives to be turned over and for them to be these great heroic people that Mm -hmm. we see later on. We see him continually giving grace to these women who, you know, whether they were prostitutes or they were sleeping with several different men that weren't their husbands. I mean, we, we talk about this often. There's a, I, I taught on it a few months ago where, um, you know, these religious leaders bring out this woman who has been caught in, you know, the act of adultery, quote unquote, which you wonder how they knew that. Right. Weird. <laughs> Anyway, she was probably sleeping with one of them, honestly. And it's yes. they bring her out like butt naked in front of this crowd to embarrass her and with the intention of killing her. And Jesus poses this awesome, you know, just great question like he does that not only saves their life, but rebukes these religious men. Mm-hmm. And so often when I look at the church, the modern day church, that is exactly what I see. Yes. It's like, we're going to point out everything these people are doing wrong because it calls the attention away from what the church is doing wrong. Yeah, mm. yeah. I heard very clearly from God, and I, I don't say that lightly, at a young age that he had some plans for my life and I was going to do ministry. I was on a mission trip and thought, wow, this is really cool. But because of the things that happened over time and the shame I felt, I thought, well, that's that's out the window. And that story of Jesus drawing the line in the sand and just the the separation of, you know, if you're if you're perfect, then go ahead and blame her. But if you're not perfect, you need to go away. That always sticks out to me. Like yeah. if I'm going by those rules of perfection, I should never be where I am. Yeah. But going by the rules that Jesus set out, okay, I can be here. I can do ministry. I can do the things that, that I feel like God called me to do mm-hmm. and created me to do. Well, and those people turned into the just the best servants, Mm -hmm. the volunteers that we see week in and week out that give their time to vertical church, that love on my kids that amplify every week, that love on people when they come in the door because they've lived life, they Mm -hmm. know, and there's actual life change and they can be genuine when they say like, this is why this matters. This is where I was. I met Jesus. I met his people. I live life with him now. I'm not perfect, but life is better here. Mm -hmm. You look at people who live this polished life that is trying to, I don't know, communicate something other than it is that's why people don't want anything to do with the church yeah yeah well it's like we always say like living life with people is what gives you the ability when it the time comes for correction to happen Mm -hmm. you know and discipleship to happen Mm -hmm. it gives you that place to to say that you're not coming as some jerk with ill intentions and this is what the bible says thump it's just it's out of love yeah which is the major difference from a lot of churches I am curious, Megan, because we talked about it a little last week in your story, um, kind of the, you, you've been in two marriages, one that was that was very healthy now and very unhealthy mm-hmm. at the time. I'm curious about the roles that this would have played in your life, particularly talking about this purity culture and the mindset that it sent you into mm-hmm. going into that first marriage versus the second marriage. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because of the... The choices that I made, and I don't, you know, no one forced me to live the lifestyle that I lived during those times. Mm. Um, It was a very unhealthy lifestyle, and I made very unhealthy choices. But because of those, I felt like, well, this is what I have earned. And so this is now where I am. Mm. Um, And I remember my dad, before I walked down the aisle to marry the first time, he said, you don't have to do this. I can go out there, and I'll stop everything right now. Wow. And I was like, no, I do, because that's just what I felt like I had to do. Um, And so living in that marriage for a little while and the unhealth and just the feeling like, well, this is what it is. This is what I have to do. And then getting out of that and then beginning a relationship later on with Mike. It was it was very hard for me to accept the good things because I still felt like this isn't right. This Mm -hmm. isn't. This, this is, is a, it shouldn't like, be this good. What? I, mean, I remember I called my mom and I was like, mom, he cooked me dinner and he fixed my plate and pulled my chair out. And she said, well, yes, of course, because you deserve that. You know, um, my parents always loved me through it and, and they didn't do things perfectly. And they said things that were hard for me to hear, but they were also parenting in the middle of purity culture. Yeah. So um, going into the relationship with Mike and then once we were married and in the church, I was 
grasping at everything that I could find for us to learn how to be healthy because we both knew that's what we wanted. Yeah. And we both knew we were raising a blended family and we wanted to do better for them. Mm. Um, and so it's taken a lot of work and we're not, I don't think you ever arrive. No, no marriage is ever just at the peak of perfection, but it's, it's a very different thing when you're in a healthy place and, um, and you're living out that healthy life and seeking what God wants for your life. That's such a scary thing to think about, like a young woman going into a situation like that, thinking like, because the church told her, this is what I deserve, Mm -hmm. you know? And that starts in a, that's, that starts in a place where the church has a history of cheapening women's roles in the church, Mm -hmm. which is toxic. I mean, that, that is toxic. You look at whole denominations of churches where they have completely excluded women and told them, no, you need to go work in the nursery because that's where the kids are. Yep. And it is it is this culture of men that it's it's just a sick cycle, mm-hmm. you know? And you have a whole generation of women who grew up as Christians, quote unquote, who felt completely devalued because not only did they not have a place in the church, but they didn't really have a place with these <laughs> in this whole spiritual life. That's, yeah. that's very sad. Here, a yeah. thought I was having sp- going into the marriage stuff is like, what what are the ramifications of, you know, when sex becomes an acceptable thing mm-hmm. in a in a marriage? Is it weird yeah. going into that marriage when you've been taught the whole time about this purity culture and like how does that yeah. affect sex life? Well, I feel like I've that's seen... going to be different for guys and girls. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, I'm it, curious though. I saw a lot of that, especially just going. I mean, I, I grew up in a Christian household and then went to a small private Private christian Christian college college. Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i've seen that a lot um and just like my friends getting married and when you're taught your whole life that sex is bad sex is bad sex is bad and like even when you're dating and engaged like no don't do it it's bad it's bad and then one like 30 minutes later in like one ceremony all of that changes and you have to completely shift your your perspective on that and and i know that can be really hard for i mean a lot of uh women it's just you've spent your whole life thinking that it's bad and then shifting from it being a good thing. that you, It's not just a shift that you can make in, in one day. Yeah, I think that's going to be different for guys and, and, and girls. But the one thing that will be similar is because it has been built up to this massive thing that happens mm-hmm. the night you get married, yes. there is an immediate need to perform. And yeah, like, yeah. I don't know about girls, but dudes go into that and they're like, all right. I've got to just rock this. Yeah. <laughs> Our marriage is not going to work after this. Yeah. You the, know? the expectations for the wedding night uh, is just, it, there's so much, it, it feels like there's so much pressure there too. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. And what's crazy about that is that people that who, you know, who haven't waited, who have had sex before marriage, I some of them, I, that is definitely not the healthiest choice. I mean, you can look at scripture and see that. But a lot of times, those Christian couples who just got married right out of college or whatever, they're going to be much more healthy because that person can say, hey, this isn't going to change life one way or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't, whatever happens tonight is not going to change everything, you know? Um, yeah, that's interesting. So maybe, yeah. what's, the, what's the better language f- if you're you know, for people that actually have made it, you know, not that that, that was poorly worded. What are you trying to say, Chase? (laughs) I'm better than you. (laughs) But like, if you've got two people that are, are making it to marriage and have actually waited, what's the better language to set them up better for for them? Maybe. Yeah. Well, like maybe what's the better guidance? Yeah. Like what are the better? What's the better language to put Do around? We still have sex? those old like VCR tapes that you used to show. To, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is your changing body. Uh, I don't know. I think that that. Um, I think that that's a good thing to talk about in marriage counseling. Uh, yeah. I think that there mm-hmm. is there is a really healthy ramp up to that, so that you can be very comfortable talking about things. Because because the reality is, I mean, I've talked to enough young dudes that have just gotten married. And they don't even know how to talk about sex yeah, with their right. partner. Yeah, you know, they they don't know how. They definitely aren't experienced enough to tell you what they want, mm-hmm. and they sure don't know what she wants. Yeah. yeah, and they are terrified to talk about that with mm-hmm. them. It seems like that whole. I mean, let's get real. If you're getting married, you've probably talked about it anyway. 
But that whole marriage counseling portion of life leading up, that's a very healthy time to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sure. Plus, pastors know a lot about sex, so it's we like can our, help you. <laughs> your main thing. We're just taught. Not well, true. I, think, I think just go to the Southern Baptist Convention. <laughs> being able. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, go ahead. A bunch of guys just making it, you know. <laughs> I just think if growing up, it would have been talked about like because. For for me, it was like sex is bad. Well, why? It's a sin. Is this Before your parents marriage. or is this church? All of it. Probably everybody. All yeah. Of it. yeah. And so I guess never explaining the like God's design for marriage and why it's really healthy for marriage. Um, I that, think that this purity culture is that something that purity culture could have done. I think so. I yes. think so. Thinking back on it, I think my dad, for all his faults, actually did a really good job of giving perspective to sex and like waiting. Give me a Scott quote. Uh, <clears throat> so like there was a night where he. Oh, well, we should all talk about the talks our parents. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. no. That, this is <laughs> no, way no. after the talk. No, uh, talk was in fifth grade. I didn't get a talk. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I knew everything too, so it was kind of an underwhelming talk. Anyway. <laughs> um, Advice or parents out there, your kid already knows. Especially so just, yes. as a boy. If they're yeah. if they're in if they school, have ever ridden the bus, learning things. Yes. No. Yes. Anyway, uh, there was. You remember <laughs> back in uh, high school, you would send there were these mass texts that would go out that were copy paste like oh, reply yeah. with three if you'd sleep with me, reply with four if I'm your best friend, stuff yeah. like oh, that. Gosh. So I was a dating a girl at the time. And we had done one of those, and one of the options was sex related. I didn't send it because we were we were good and we were you know better than you. Uh, <clears throat> but my mom had gone through my he phone really and saw that. that. <laughs> yeah, no, I did not. I was copy pasting that thing. Um. <laughs> anyway, my mom had gone through my phone and saw one of the options being sex related, and so my dad talked to me and said, you know, you know, you're gonna do what you want to. You're gonna do. I know you're a guy in high school. Just know that sex is really, really awesome. Like it, it's gonna be awesome, but it's just it's worth waiting for. It's how how good of a gift it is to save that for your future wife and mm-hmm. stuff like all all of that language. Which at the time it really made a lot of sense to me. Um, but also I know like how do you the flip side of that is how do you talk to somebody that didn't make it like what's what's the healthy language around mm-hmm. that yeah well and that's that's what i was gonna say i got the inverse of that my dad and i never had a talk until after he knew i was sleeping with my girlfriend mm-hmm. you know and so at, at that point it's like anything you say now isn't really going to help me so i think i i would say one is hey be active in that don't wait around you know for your kid to ask you about it because they're not going to mm-hmm. you know I, I i would commend your dad on going out of his way to do mm-hmm. that I also think it's different with guys and girls. I don't That's know how moms true. go about that. Mm-hmm. Um, probably less abrasive than dads. Mm. I don't know. Probably do much think? sweeter. You're a mom. What do you think? How how would, how would you talk? How do you talk to your kids about that? Because your kids are all well, not not, not Sawyer. One. <laughs> Sawyer is still a baby. <laughs> I have three of your one. kids, <laughs> but I do have three in high school. Yes, and my discussions with each you know each kid is very different. And not just so my true. not just my three kids, but you know all teenagers. The way that you approach them with different things. I'm laughing just thinking about how different the <laughs> from each Keaton. of your kids. <laughs> <laughs> my conversations with Keaton are like very deep and thoughtful, and Parker's like, "Please quit talking." Here's the artistic to me about side this. of sex. It's yes. beautiful. Par- yes. Parker's yes. like, "What did she say?" Yes. <laughs> don't don't say it again. Let me out. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Macy is a completely different version of that. So <laughs> it's a lot of, um, awesome. hey, you know, I don't expect you to be perfect. And I don't ever, we've always told our kids, honesty is the best thing. Mm. Like, Be honest. I can't promise there won't be consequences, but they will be much less severe if you're honest with me about things. Mm. And so we just try to keep open communication about things. And I focus a lot on, not saying sex is bad, don't do it. But, hey, here's what God's design is for mm. sex. Here's what I believe about sex. Here's what I did wrong yeah. and what <clears throat> I did right. And here's what I my experience is. And here's the, the way that that affected me emotionally, too. Yeah. Because that's never talked about. It is now more than, yeah. than it was. 
But I think that's one of the biggest things that purity culture missed was just saying it's bad, but not talking about those emotional effects that it had right. on on girls and guys mm-hmm. when they did I, travel. I down love that road. because I mean, this is something that you know, when you work with students, you talk to parents about this, and so many parents have a very similar experience to yours, mm-hmm. uh, even even friends of ours, you know. And they're terrified to talk to their kids about their own experiences. And the reality is that if you don't talk to your kids, they are not only going to repeat those things, they're going to go much further because they haven't been given the wisdom that you have. On yes. It, you know? um, so it's a trap. I know, I think, I think parents want their kids to see them as something that they're not when in reality, the experiences that you had are so much more important. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. This is a big topic. It's complicated. Yeah, we could probably yes. do this for nine weeks. <laughs> nine months. Yeah. Mm. Leave anything out. Is there anything else that we wanted to say on this? I, I think we've covered. I mean, I would love to hear some questions from our listeners if yeah. they have any. Yeah, I, think, we I, yeah, I guess we're not, we're not afraid to come back this. to the topic yeah. if there's questions. I think that would be a great idea. If you have yeah. questions on the up. topic, mm-hmm. uh, we've already proven we want we love to talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so send them our way and we can yeah. address them and ask us anything. Yep. Yeah. Sounds Sweet. Great. Just wait till marriage. <laughs> Shut up. Do not end it on that. <laughs> oh, it was great uh, until Chase ended it because he thought that he's better than Austin. So you're and saying Maddie. you're better than me. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to say this whole episode. You hadn't caught that yet? Yeah. All okay. right. I'm sorry. I have to pee. See ya. Uh. Sound like a Catholic church. Oh, wow. uh, speaking of, never mind. Yeah, we're Catholic and we're bringing questions in hot. Is that, yes. Yeah. yeah. They. Uh, well, Is the that Catholics how the Catholics? Catholics they're, they're known for that. Yeah. <laughs> Raising questions. Raising Good questions. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, oh, uh, ask us oh, anything. Uh, okay. We have some good questions this week. Yes, we do. <laughs> also, we should also say not a, we don't only bash other denominations. We totally bashed Baptists earlier, so that's there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, send us your questions if you have any, please. Yeah, you can. You can email us. Right. Mm-hmm. Where can they email us? Chase, where can they email us? Plus at livevertical.tv or you can go to livevertical.tv and click the Hey Vertical button. They can also DM us on Instagram, mm-hmm. right? And yep. there are little things on the tables in the lobby if you're strolling out on a mm-hmm. Sunday and you're like, hey, I have a question because Austin just killed that talk on Sunday morning. <laughs> and uh, those cards you can have tell a me QR personally. code. Yeah. You can just scan it and put it in on your phone too. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, if you, Beautiful. If you There's write. so many ways to ask so many questions. Ways. So All right, many ways. we got some for today. Yes. Okay. I'm excited. We'll just start it out. What is the worst date you've ever been on? Say that again. <laughs> oh. The worst date you have ever been on. The worst date that I've ever been on. I, I already know mine. Do y'all need to think? Go for it. I know mine too. All right. I'm setting the stage. I'm 16. I uh, I have a 1999 Chevrolet Cheyenne. It Chevrolet. wasn't even a, it wasn't even a Silverado. Ooh. It was a single cab, long wheelbase, and uh, it was I loved that truck. And so I'm on a date. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm going towards North Little Rock over a big bridge. Mm. And there is a wreck on the side of the road. And traffic is a little backed up. Now, I'm, I have this girl on this date. I don't remember why we were going to North Little Rock. But in high school, you have to pull the move where, like, if you have the bench seat in your truck, she's in the middle, you know. <laughs> and we're, we're doing that thing. We're listening to music. And we stop. We come to a stop as we come up on the wreck. And there are tons of brake lights, and there are tons of police lights, like there where their sirens are. And what I did not know about this young lady is that she was epileptic, and so oh, she can't no. read. I forgot this story. Yeah, you told this so before. she's epileptic, <laughs> and uh, she immediately goes into uh, convulsions and oh has a seizure God. in my passenger seat. Now I'm 16 and had never seen a seizure before in my life. The one thing that I knew about seizures was that sometimes when they have seizures, they bite they their... They get nervous on airplanes. Yeah, right. <laughs> sometimes they get nervous <laughs> on airplanes. Is that they bite their tongues. Mm-hmm. And so I went in like a freaking hero, and I pulled her over into my lap, 
and I saw that she was biting down and I was worried about her tongue and I went to, with my finger, <laughs> move her tongue out of the way of her teeth and she bit the crap out of crap. My, the crap out of my finger so much so that I had to get it stitched up later. So oh she so geez. so I Do you still have a scar? Yes. Let I me do. see. It's well, it's kind of in the digit. You can't really see it. In the what? In the digit there. The digit? I can't tell what's old man wrinkle and what's Whatever. going. Okay. So we end up, her parents come, we have this whole thing, and I feel like a dang hero. Like she goes into a seizure, I save her tongue. I you get uh, bit in the process. I get bit in the process, and I'm like, look, I'm so I see her later that next week, and I'm like, hey, look, I'm re- I I need a hero's reception, and she's like, you idiot, why would you put your finger in my mouth oh my while God. I'm having a seizure? And I'm like, all right, well, this is done. We will never see one another again because I'm a hero, and I need you to know that. So. Yes, <laughs> worst date ever. Oh, build me up. That does yeah. suck a lot. Mine kind of pales in comparison because mine's just yeah, mine's a classic not. bad date. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. I, mine's not. <laughs> but the way it, the way you should have gone last. Austin, <laughs> sorry. The way that did happen, it is just very, stands out. <laughs> it's yeah. very not me, but I um, I was perusing an app, uh, back in. 2016 was it Grinder? Oh. 15 was Grinder out then? Stop. Not yet. <laughs> um, but it rhymed with the end of it. It's Tinder. Ah, uh, um, <laughs> you're on Tinder at 16. <laughs> no, 20, no, in 2016. 2016. <laughs> Tinder was not out at 20 in, when I, I was 16. Just said 16. I was like, <laughs> was oh this before God. or after I uh, brought you on full time? Before. Before. It may have been 2015. Actually, I don't yeah. know. All these years run together up until about 2018. I, I understand. Um, anyway, uh, we decide to go to Cups and Fondren, uh, to which she didn't get it, any coffee. So I don't really know why. No, no, we went to Cane's first. Oh, man. Oh, so it wow. started off great. Yeah, you had a great and day. Did she to like start Cane's out. sauce? Oh, yeah. So you felt yeah, good about it. Yes, yeah, she ordered yeah. exactly what I ordered. And, and then she didn't she like coffee. No, yeah, it was weird. Well, I wasn't a snob was then. Um, but was this girl local? She was from Crystal Springs, which was pretty far away, actually. She drove quite away for this this day. But yeah, she, but your profile pic she, was... She swiped right. Your profile so pic she, was she, a standout. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my general idea with her is that she's pretty easy to talk to because we're texting or, well, I guess messaging, and it's going well. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, we were texting about this point because we had swapped numbers. Um, and so texting's going great, uh, really hitting it off. We decided to go to Cane's, immediately more attracted to her because she likes Cane's. Um, we sit down with our food, and the conversation literally goes nowhere. I mean, I, I fully, fully mean this. One of the most boring people I have ever talked to in my life, ever. There, there is a, uh, back in the day when, when people talked on phones, there's a phone game, mm-hmm. uh, Winston Bishop has that. Um, <laughs> there's definitely texting game. Yeah, you can have texting game and then meet in person. You're like, she wow, did. this is a real dud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Luckily, I have both uh, in person and texting. Yeah. Actually, Rachel will swear that I'm an awful. Texter I'm just a charismatic I'm, guy. I don't no, know. No, I'm just killing it all the time. So how did that Austin's end? A hero. Chase literally, is we, we hung out for probably four hours that day. Oh, because neither of us were just willing to pull the plug, even though we both knew there was not going to be a second date. Yeah. You know, Barney, Stins- Barney Stinson, uh, the scholar that he was, said that there should be a lemon law on dates where, like, if you're within 15 minutes and you know it's not going to work, you should be able to be like, hey, look, this is a lemon. I'm just going to send it back like a car and be like, this isn't work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Avery, what you got? Um. So mine was in college and... Wait, what was his... No, we can't say you names. Know. We can't say names, but you I know, know who it was. <laughs> you know who it is. <laughs> um, and let me just tell you, Mississippi College freshman boys are a different boys. breed of mm-hmm. boys. Um, They're all waiting for marriage. Yes. <laughs> and our... Well, have a ring and want to put it on the finger. Yeah, they after came the to college day. with a ring. They were like, all right, let's yes. go. I converted so, my purity ring into a wedding band. <laughs> back, back in the day, especially freshman year of college, I, I went on quite a few dates. Oh, um, oh, yuck. I, I was mostly the one turning people down. Um, oh, oh, Avery. <laughs> Avery flexing on the pod. Strong lock. <laughs> um, it was funny because they were all. 
<laughs> Stop it. Go, 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 go. I'm so into this story now. They they were all friends with each other, too, which is kind of makes it even worse. You dated through a friend group? Uh, yes. Wow. Homewreckers are homewreckers, Let's man. Let's go. Um, yeah, one time they were all sitting at a table together when my friends was like, wow, it's Avery broke my heart club. <laughs> <laughs> like all sitting at a table together. Wow. Anyways, okay. So this guy, um, he This is the most confident I've ever seen you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he asked me on a date and it it fell it had fallen through a couple times. Like something had come up for him and something had come up for me. And finally we were we found a time to go and he was like, Well, let's just like I'll surprise you. And nice. So bold. Way to he go, comes guy. To my dorm room, mm. not the room, but like y'all do the, that uh, at Mississippi College. <laughs> Your pod? no, not on Wednesdays and Sundays because they're holy days. Anyways, that's Just a whole other Wednesdays. What? Stupid. Yeah, don't don't even get me started. Um, and he's like, we're gonna we're gonna go to this on campus restaurant, oh. which it's like it's called eighteen twenty six. I don't think it's there anymore, but it's pretty much just like fried. It's food. just like the like yeah. it's like pizza and. It's not anything spectacular at all. Like that it's like was the, already. It's like in the commons. Like it's yeah, just. Yeah. Yes. Not nothing romantic at all. And we sit there for three hours and he only talked about himself. He did not. I, I barely said anything. I, I, that doesn't sound like is, Dalton. He really did that? No. <laughs> not <laughs> Dalton. But and like, you know me, uh, I ask. A, I usually ask a lot of questions when I'm trying to get to know someone. <sighs> I did not ask him one question. He just talked the whole like, time. If, if a, a guys will never learn if girls are not like, dude, this is a yeah. really bad date, yeah. and you need to know where you're going wrong so you don't bore this next girl to tears. And I'm I'm wondering if he just panicked, and that was his like defense, as he just kept talking. That's kept a bad talking. date. But I mean, things date. things went south with this guy. What's his name? I'm not saying his <laughs> name. He's married now. It's fine. Uh oh, poor girl. <laughs> He still writes her. Go ahead, Megan. <laughs> so mine was not in high school or college. It was early adulthood. Mm. Um, it was post-divorce, and I started hanging out with some of my friends that I didn't get to hang out with a lot in, during my first marriage, and they were just trying to like make my life happy and, and take me out and do things. So, No, girls, if he doesn't let you hang out with friends, he is not the one. You're right. All you're right. right. Go ahead. So anyway, I ended up... I, Spent some time with this one guy within our group setting several times, and we got to know each other and thought, okay, a date. So there was a, um, I'm from the coast where they have the Mardi Gras cruise, and so mm. you go from like frat parties to the Mardi Gras. Was group this dude parties. trying to get out of the friend zone? Is this where yes, we're at? Yeah. Mm. So okay, that's a so hill we to go, climb. Golly, yeah, that's a mountain. So we go out, and the first red flag was. We were driving, and I don't even remember who wrote. It was a country song. And anyways, it was about a wedding. And he was like, are we going to play this at our wedding when we get married one day? <gasps> oh, wow. And I he just laughed it off Mary. as a joke. like, ha -ha. Sounds like an MC boy. Yeah, I don't know that I'll ever get married again. And, you know, just kind of went on. Hail Mary. Well, later on, this was also right around the time that the, the ringtones came out, that it was like a song clip. Yep. I had a razor yep. phone. I had a razor. Um, Let's go. Yeah. Was yours pink? Mine was pink. No. Oh, okay. No, um, my pride wouldn't allow it. He changed my ringtone at some point to Jesse's girl. That was also his name. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. That early? Yes. Wow. And he was it was just a joke. Well, so that it was just like the weirdest. He probably thought he was being so smooth. Yes. Well, that's it crazy, was just man. the weird like, like, one of ten, how zone. hot was he? <laughs> She's married. She can yeah, she has more uh, right to say. I rate now. dudes all the time. I mean, <laughs> I don't know that I ever really wanted to be out of the friend zone with him. Uh, mm. So he's like a strong five. Yeah. 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 yeah that's why none yeah. of that worked. Yeah. Nah, no that's, attraction. I don't that, know. That was that also just kind of weird. Man, that I is was a very... Hail Mary. You, okay. People underrate how much a 10 will help with your handicap. That's, that's, a, that is a good conversation, though. What are the red flags? Red flags. What is, what is the red flag that shows up on a day where you're like, this... Yeah, for me, that was like... Are there You're things that you know, like you mentioned talking about yourself a lot. Yeah. Well, moving also, too quick. <laughs> moving way that's too quick. That, because I've had that yes. enc <laughs> encounter too. But I think a big red flag is if you're like mean to your mom. Like oh. that will just, no. But what if you're, never mind. 
What? Nothing. I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. If he held it, then it was for a good cause. <laughs> okay. I hold very little. So if so if a guy does not know how to talk to his mom. Well, not. I feel like the way that you treat your mom is a reflection indicative. of how you treat other women. Mm. No, that's good. It's a good rule. What about you, Chase? There's a lot. We learned canes. I love. I love. No, that's a green flag. If she doesn't like canes, she does, she, she's not in. Oh, if she chicken. if she's not into canes, yeah. I think uh, yeah. for for me, two things stick out while you think. One is if your friends don't like them, mm. then you need to you need to listen to friends. Uh, if they mm-hmm. if if they're not in on it, it, it's worth asking friends. The second thing for me is I don't like people who I feel like are holding something back. Which it which isn't which isn't good, but like if I feel like somebody is shy or they're not, they're I'm trying to think. I would never be able to date somebody introverted, and it's not because they're not good people. It's because we would not connect on a social. But level. is that a red flag though, or is that just a preference? It's a red flag for what is going to make me happy. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Honesty is like your love language. Yeah, yeah. that's Being a, that's direct. a good way to put that. I if, yeah. if if I don't feel like you can be direct with me, because I need somebody to police yes. all this. Yes. You know. Okay. If we're, okay if you we're need going, quite a few people. <laughs> I need heavy need steel guardrails. <laughs> I need a I need a strong woman to say mm-hmm. quit that. <laughs> Stop no. that. No. Um, and that woman is Caitlin. And Roberts. that woman is Caitlin. Yes. She says it more politely though. Uh, you think that well, we're getting, guess, the, we're getting, we're getting I see the car? Some feistiness there. Why did yeah. you say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the, I, if we're doing that, then red flag for a, then I just that we won't be right is being a real prude or stickler with your sense of humor. Like if you get easily offended uh, by <laughs> by jokes, you could never last with Chase. Yeah. <laughs> and I even like it, it takes a long time for me to get really loose with my sense of humor, but if it's early, early stuff, and you're just Avery, not, is that your experience? <laughs> no, Avery's got a dark sense of humor. Uh, Avery's is scary. <laughs> but, I see that. Ask my freshman yeah. roommate. I just because I'm like if that if you can't hang now, mm-hmm. then it's not gonna it's not gonna work. We yeah. can't be married. That's good. Next question. Um. <laughs> What is a run-in you've had with the cops? Tell me about it. Oh, man. I got a couple. Me I too. Don't. I'll, I'll, I'll start this off. Go ahead. Um, I've, I've had quite a few funny stories with the cops, but this one stands out in particular. I was in South Louisiana. Just my oh, friend. No good story starts here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing to do. I was just with one of my friends. It was senior year of, of high school, and we just we took a trip. I have some family that lived down there. And it was like... 10 o'clock at night and we were leaving like the movies I think Mm. and I was in a turning lane and there was literally nobody at the stoplight this intersection and the light turns green and I turn left and I see lights um behind me like like a cop was pulling me over and I was like what in the world and I so I pull over and he comes over his like intercom and was like, would the driver please step out of the vehicle and was like shining his bright light at me. And I was like, oh, my God, I was terrified. I, I like stood up. How, like, How old are you? How old are you? It's like 16 or 17. Oh, okay. Terrified. Good. And I was I was freaking out. And um, then he walked up and was like, you didn't turn your blinker on for at that stoplight. I was in a turning lane. There was no one coming, and I didn't run the light. The law is the law. Yeah. I know. Use your I blinker. Know, I know. And then, I, I mean, I was obviously panicking. I was terrified. And so he asked to see my uh, driver's license, and I handed him my credit card on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Will this get me out of it? Credit or <laughs> debit? <laughs> I'm a 17-year-old. There's probably only like $15 on here. That's funny. But he didn't give me a ticket. Um, he was just like, use your blinker. But I feel like that was a very dramatic way to pull over someone for Do not. Do you use your blinker turn. now? Yes. All right. But, but I mean, like. Lesson learned. The thing is, I, I wasn't notorious for not using my blinker. I just was in. <laughs> I just was. I was in the middle of a conversation and was just in sitting at this stoplight. I don't know. I can. Uh, you yeah, tend yeah. to zone out. I could yeah. see it. I could see I'm it. I'm on the cop side. I think. Yeah. Okay. Can I give? Can I give a quick? 
pro and con because I've had great run-ins with the cops sure. and I've had bad mm-hmm. run-ins with the cops. My pro is, and I and I I know I haven't told the story on here, but when I was probably seven or eight, I was in the Hot Springs Mall with my parents and I was going to get a piece of pizza, and because there's nothing to do in Hot Springs, and it's a very um, underwhelming mall. And somebody had stolen something. And I remember vividly, I was standing by the fountain in the center of the mall, and we were going to get a piece of pizza. I was waiting on my mom, and somebody had stolen something. And the mall cop was chasing this man, and he was running by the fountain. And seven-year-old Austin stuck out his foot and (gasps) tripped him. And the mall cop got him, and he looked at me, and he was like, good job. And I was oh. like, I'm going to grow up and be a policeman. <laughs> wow. This is my Hero destiny. Austin. I know. It was Hero like, Austin. it was like, That's the dude, I. That's everything you need to know about I Austin was Roberts. on, like, I was on such a high as yes. a seven-year-old Austin. Did your parents believe you? They were there. My oh, dad okay. was there. Oh, yeah. Nice. And he was like, wow. and, my, and my dad looked at me, like, like affectionately, and I was like, oh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> oh, um, you do love me. So, so there was that one. Then I grew up. And <laughs> then you were bad. Not then a you were bad. But here's here's I I don't know about statute of limitations on things, so I won't say anything recent. But <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was when I was in high school, my pastor was came to my friend and I uh, went like on a Wednesday night, and he was like, "Hey, we have to move somebody. Can you meet me at the church on Saturday morning before football and help me move this person?" And I was like, "I don't know why you." I don't know why in the world he would have wanted me to do this in high school. I was I was not I was not a model student or anything. So we stayed up all Friday night um, drinking, hanging out, and then we were like, out. "Well, I guess we better head to the church." And it was so early, but we were like, "Let's just go ahead and put this trailer on the back of my truck." And so we go, and he said he left it unlocked, but it was locked. And I was like, "I bet I can get into the church to get the key to unlock this trailer." So I'm back behind our church trying to get in the back door and the regular police patrol comes up and it looks like the two of us are breaking into this church. And we're like, no, we're supposed to be here. And we would definitely been drinking and like it, it was, was supposed just like, to be here it was a we whole promise. bad thing and so he had us call the pastor and he's like no they're supposed to be there i don't know why they're there at four in the morning <laughs> but it was just it was <laughs> terrible it was such a horrible experience oh, no. oh my. do you have one megan i do i do um so this is somewhat recent but i wasn't really doing anything okay bad it was just funny how it ended up so Rashville was getting ready to go over to Bangladesh and I had to go get money. And you guys know when I have to get money out, uh, it's a lot of money at a time because we have to do it. So I had a large sum of money. I won't say how much it was, but it was, it was a lot in cash. It just in my purse in the passenger (laughs) seat and I'm just driving along and crossover. I'm on Bozeman and where the (laughs) speed limit changes. I'm terrible with that. I know I am. So I'm in my own little world and I'm driving and there's a construction zone and I was definitely going faster than I should have. But my mind is on this, Money You're that to I hit have. Your blinker. Yeah. Yes, I was going to use my blinker like a good model citizen, <laughs> and my mind okay, is just come on at this me. money. So I, I'm pulled over by a police officer who was not very happy to be sitting out in the sun on his motorcycle mm. on a summer day. Yeah. You know, at construction, and he lets me know that, and he yelled at me a little bit, and I was just like, I'm really sorry. Uh, so I give him all of my stuff and he comes back and he was like, I mean, what are you doing? And he's, he's like parenting me at this point, just getting onto me. And I was like, to be very honest, I have bleep bitty bleep amount of money sitting here and it's in cash because some people from our church are getting ready to go overseas and his whole demeanor changed. And he was just like, all right, well, don't take my kindness today for negligence and, um, make sure you go to the speed limit and hand me everything back and let me go. Mm. Oh, Mm. Thankful for the the money that I had to carry around Real that job. day. Yeah, <laughs> was very mine's fun. a quick one. Mine's okay. a quick one. Is it right? Because I've had day? I've had very few run-ins with the cops. <clears throat> um, I would love to watch you get pulled over. Uh, it depends. If it's a sheriff, then they know who I am. Yeah. Or they, they see my license and they're like, "Oh, hammock." It's very different when it's the Madison County sheriffs versus the, oh, the Madison, Madison City, City police. They're <laughs> kind of dirty. You didn't hear that here, though. <laughs> 
Um, we just love our sheriff's department. They're yeah, the best. that's right. They really, county people. They really, truly are the best. <laughs> um, so I, this is when Rachel and I lived in the links still, the some local apartments. Um, I still stand to this day that I heard a gunshot in the apartment underneath ours. You know, oh, I remember this. It's like living like, in Jackson. So there's a specific, there's a specific sound a gunshot makes when it is inside and you're hearing it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you threw a basketball against a wall. Yeah. It's like a weird ring, but it's distinct. Um, no one died, so I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, I, I'm certain, and Rachel's certain too, so I call the cops and say, hey, I'm not certain, but I'm certain that a gunshot just went off uh, in the apartment below ours. So we give all the information, yada, yada. They come and do a check. They knock on the door, and I hear them say, hey, your upstairs neighbor said they <laughs> heard a gunshot in your apartment. We're just going to see, yada, yada, yada. I was like, you freaking, you told them that I called? Now they're going to kill me. Yeah, what is, what is <laughs> they're out for me now? Because I reported them. So anyway, I could have died, but I didn't because we moved. Mm. So that was a quick, you know. I'm glad you moved. It felt like <laughs> negligence from the cop to say that. Yeah. <sighs> like what if they were bad people? Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Snitches get stitches. Great That's answer. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Chase, um, huh. I want you to ask this next question. Oh yeah, because I thought so of you it. can kind of explain it a little better than All I All right. Can. So I took you they said we can ask anything, so I took it to heart. If you are a character in a movie, all right. Oh. Insert genre here. <laughs> okay. So you gotta pick the genre. <clears throat> you're the cool person in the movie, okay? You get the, for I, once in your life, I you're cool. I would never be. <laughs> That's why you're playing a character. You are being introduced to the movie. It's your walk-in shot. It's slow-mo, okay? Like quintessential cool guy walk-in scene. Right. Or girl. Cool girl walk-in scene. Yeah. On a horse. Maybe. Okay. What is the song that's playing? Mm. Are we going to play can these songs? Can we play songs? a snippet? If you can find it on Spotify fast enough, then yeah, hit play. <sighs> so you, the ne this next five minutes may be muted, so a, you'll know what happens. Oh, yeah. This is, a, this is a very hard question. Chase, will you start yeah. us off? Do you know yours? Yeah, so, so mine was decided. I had a hard time not picking Get Down On It which you were humming earlier and inspired this question. Okay, good. But I felt like I couldn't because that's what inspired me. Okay. But I came up with, an, a, I think, a really, really good option because it has good dynamic. It starts off a little lower and then comes in. And so the movie is, it's some classic comedy where it's a bunch of nerds, all right? And I see myself as a nerd, but I'm on the cool <laughs> side of the spectrum, oh, I feel so like. super bad. I feel like I'm... Kind of, yeah, okay. honestly. Yeah. So yeah. like, I think Great I'm a, I'm the cooler nerd that's coming into the fray to help them. Yada yada yada. <laughs> and the song that plays is one that not many will know, but you should know. Baseline. That's a great cool guy intro. Yeah. Generals gather. Right, yeah, I mean that just has good vibes written all of, <laughs> yeah. all over it. It's it's got a little more spunkiness and rhythm than the original uh, original Black Sabbath. I was going to say, that's but a, that's it's, a good cover. It's War Pigs by Cake. Yeah, that's a great cover. And I don't know why. There's many things that go into it, but it just makes me feel really freaking cool. I feel when like I Cake hear the doesn't song. get enough credit. They're they're niche, I love but them. I love elect them. people. Uh, like <laughs> cake, you know what I mean? Avery, what was your answer? Um, don't well, explain it, just play it and then explain <laughs> and then, it because I want explain. people to hear no, your song. No, first. I, have to, I have to paint the picture. No, I paint it after. Go, go, go. No, okay, do what you want to do. Good. So, I feel like the this movie would be more of a like, I don't know. A, a, Say it, a coming of age, uh, something, yeah. yeah, like that. <laughs> um, and it's like. Dusk. It's like, <laughs> what's your character? Um, I have, I don't know. I, I don't think I would be the main character. But you got who's but, cool? You're cool for some I reason. 
So my my song wouldn't be like a cool like rock song like yours. It's That's more of a she like didn't listen to the song. <laughs> it's more of a slower, melancholy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that fits me more. But okay, it would be none other. Are you mysterious? In the movie, I am okay, mysterious. Cool. All right, cool. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm gonna oh. close my eyes. Okay. Should I say the name of the song? No, nope, just, just play, play it. afterwards. I'm ready. Got a good guitar intro, just wait. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> okay, Hold it closer to your mic, more go. in front of it. There you go. Mm. Oh. Is that slide? Yeah. Fancy. Mm. Indie okay. slide. So you get you get the vibe. It's Space Song by Beach House. I feel like someone died. Yes. Okay, oh, somebody good. definitely died in yeah. that movie. Someone definitely dies in my movie. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Megan, what, what came to mind for you? So you guys know I consulted with my family group message on this, as Wise. I do sometimes. Wise. Is, but we, we always get the best answers out of that group chat. Yeah, it's a fun thing. So um, this is what was picked, and I agree with it. And I think, the, well, I'll play it, and then I'll explain why I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did, she, did she bleep herself? That's perfect. <laughs> perfect. I love that. Which one of your Which one of your kids said that? My oldest. His name is Keaton. Yeah. Mm. Uh, um, my favorite. He is. He probably knows the most of like my life story. Just he loves to ask questions about things like that. So that's I feel I like along. in Keaton thinking that that's like okay, she's the one that's showing up. Like, hey, I have the life experience. I'm here to handle things. Don't mess with me. That's pretty good. He mm. sees me as that. I'm I'm not always that, but he does see me as that. That's good. That's mm. a good one. Okay, I awesome. struggled with this one, and I actually asked for some guidance. Um, From whom? Oh, Avery. Avery told. I think Avery's the closest. Hey. If I'm, it's probably. I'm kind of with Chase. That is a. That's an underrated genre of movie to me. That like mid two thousands comedy. Yes. It, you kind of that super bad. Um, yeah. Pineapple Express. Uh, all of those, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all those same people. So I'm I'm coming in, and this is this is a band that I love. And uh, I think that this would probably, um, this would probably be it. Hang on. Make sure my phone's up. <laughs> Do you know this song? When they drop into the verse, that's when I would come out, I think. This reminds me of summer at the pool. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's like a that is like a secret uh I don't know. What, what what would you call it? That's like a guilty pleasure genre for me. That feels like the hot <laughs> no. guy walking out at the that pool just, kind of. I, I, yes. just, yeah. I love it. As as anyway, water parks. It's good. So Lizzie right. McGuire. Oh your Lizzie McGuire's crushed. That's Perfect. the vibe. Hey, Montana, I, had the swoop. To me, Pilo. I had the swoop. <laughs> that was that was that time. God, that's yeah. One of my there was time a weird movie. part of quarantine when Jason and I were Jeez. FaceTiming and we went way back in each other's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> There's some tragedy. It's bad. Yeah. All right. Should we do recommends? I guess yes. so. Yeah. Recom recommends. Recommends. Mm. Oh man, you know what? We didn't talk about campers this episode. St thanks for sticking with us, campers, if you made it this far. Happy you're here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm. Are we recommending? Yeah, let's keep this energy. Let's seem bored. Let's talk forward. about let's talk like we're on NPR. Which show? Um just kind of your general Tiny Desk class concerts. Oh, no, I mean, just like your general smart guy, but where you talk directly into the microphone. Oh, okay. Do we yeah. have to talk really low like Yeah, these? you kind of have to talk no. low into the microphone, and then you talk about... So we wanted to introduce this next segment called Recommends. Um, the overarching theme for this segment is one of gratitude and appreciation for Janice. Ah, uh, yes, Janice. Janice. Um, well, you, you all know Janice. Um, she, Who is Janice. Uh, if you don't know Janice, she is Benjamin David Derrick, lead pastor of Vertical Church, uh, his mother-in-law, who has supplied the bloodline and culture of this here segment that we are doing at the moment. Mm. 
She revolutionized uh, Christmas back in the uh, when did she meet Ben? Probably early eighties. Early. 80s. early. Um, <laughs> <laughs> by uh, instead of just maxing out credit cards, uh, shopping for Christmas presents, she mm. she theorized a, yeah. an equation by which to buy gifts, where each person is given something that they want, something that they need, yeah. something that they uh, could wear. And something that they could read to further enlighten themselves. Yeah, so it's, it has been known as the Janus Method for some time now. And we've been um, recommending uh, yep. things by this Janus Method since yep. the beginning of time. Hey guys, time. yesterday was Easter and I'm really tired. Okay. <laughs> and now you're kind of making me even more sleepy okay. in these mm-hmm. All right. we'll bedtime push story forward. voices. We'll push forward. Okay, we'll switch to ASMR. So what you're going to Shut <laughs> up. All right, recommends. Who has uh, one? I'm first. Woo! Uh, now we'll, we're awake. Let's up. go. No somebody more just, need. Somebody just drove Wake off up. the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They had Sorry, headphone done. users. Woke a baby. Oh, I wonder if anybody uses headphones to listen to us. It's. I'm sorry if you do. What do you want? Yeah. I I <laughs> don't want it anymore because I've already experienced. Headphones will be great for this, Avery. Thank you for that yeah. great segue yeah. into one of the most important musical pieces to exist in modern times. Oh, okay. It is about to. Do what Wolfpack has been trying to do for some years now, and it is bring funk uh, slash a little bit of R&B into the masses, okay? Uh, I shouldn't just give all that credit to Wolfpack. That's not fair, although I do love them. If you know who Bruno Mars is, and if you know who Anderson Pack is, Mm. then you should know, but if you don't know, you should know Silk Sonic, a brand new super group, I guess super duo, really, yeah. um, that has come out of the ashes of 2020, where creative energy flew and fluttered all about during our lockdowns in our respective areas. And two people, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, decided that they needed to join forces and create one of the most incredible sounds I've ever heard. They have literally released one song. It's called Leave the Door Open. It's a pretty good it's, song. Yeah, it's good. Just, just so you know. Pause in this. In, this. In, in this <laughs> Go in this, listen to yes, it. Yes, in the spirit of uh, purity culture, highly sexual song. Um, not in verbiage, but in feel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did not need to say that. It's really, it's such a good song, and all it does is just make you just ruin the song for everyone. Oh no, he's not wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Have you heard it? Yes. Okay, tell me I'm wrong. Great song. Uh, I am jazzed for whatever (laughs) album is about to come out of this. I cannot freaking wait. So go listen to it. All right, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Need. What do we need? Okay. <laughs> Save it. What do we need? Um, so if you know my husband Dalton, he gets very excited about very functional things. Like Funk. He, I feel like you both love to purchase things, but his tend to be very functional. No, I, I don't buy anything. Nothing. Uh Dalton is definitely the spender. Um but he has recently introduced me to these and they're they're pretty cool. Um, it's called a hero clip. Um, you kind of have to, you should Google it. That's what I called my vines. Is that the, is that the <laughs> clip that they put in their guns and Westerns where they never run out of shots? Mm. <laughs> hero clip. Yeah. That's, that's what, yeah. it's you should design that. Go ahead. Yeah, since you're a hero. Um, or stormtroopers. But pretty much it makes it to where you can hang up anything on anything. So it kind of has this like mechanism that's like curved. So like if you wanted to hang your purse from a door uh a doorway you could or like from the side of a table or bathroom um, stall literally anything is that what dalton does with it (laughs) no but like it's it's very useful when you go camping because you can you know hang up your backpack or something um or just it's it's pretty handy cool so where can you buy them super extravagant amazon Amazon, Amazon just google hero clip it's about 20 bucks for like a pack of two, which cool. is kind of expensive, but they're they're very heavy duty. You can hang very heavy things. Hero on. Clip, sponsor us. Yes. Mm. Yes. We will clip all kinds of things. Megan, you have wear? Wear. And this is for the ladies. Sorry, oh, guys. Wow. Dang Sexist. Sexist. No. Oh, all right. right. You should See, buy your wives a pair <laughs> if you're a man. It's very um, not 2021 of you. 
well, you know. We're inclusive. Go ahead. So my recommend here for something to wear is a brand of denim, and it's called Can Can, and they make jeans, and they make jeans that fit well, that are comfortable. Sounds like a Star Wars character. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's K-A-N. C-A-N. Even more. Can-can. And they're affordable, which makes me love them even more. So they're like on the same price range as American Eagle jeans, but for me and other people I know, they fit better and feel better, Mm. and I can wear them for a long time without- They're only women's? Things to- Yeah. Shucks. I have such a hard time with jeans. Jeans are hard to find. I don't know that I've ever seen you wear jeans. I've seen you wear- I see you- I saw you wear jeans at Awake Weekend, and that's the first time I've ever seen you wear jeans. Yeah, well, I had to wear those tight black ones. That doesn't count. Mm -hmm. We were all trying new things at Awake Weekend. Can can. Can can. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yep. Uh, I have Reed. And then we want it. Then we'll put this thing out of its misery. Who is surprised that you have Um, Reed? So I've, this is, this is one that I'm, uh, well, done listening to, but uh, it would probably. Be, I think I'm gonna go back and buy a physical copy so I can make notes in it. Um, this is one that, in <laughs> <laughs> Lamentations, uh, Revelation. Yeah, it's this is a book that I've really been into the last week or so. It's called The Fourth Turning. It's by a guy named William Strauss, and I couldn't remember who sub wrote it. Uh, Neil Howe. Uh, but William Strauss is the one that reads the audio. <laughs> well, you <laughs> squat down on one knee. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Shut up. How do you kneel? Neil? How? Uh, Neil How? <laughs> the Fourth Turning oh. is a book. Uh, it's it's a book on American history, and basically, it outlines the different generations and says that. Every four generations, we are due. Oh, an, this is that book. Yes, we're due mm. an American crisis, but we start the yeah. cycle over, and so. It was written in 1997, and he Mm. kind of predicts the oncoming crisis where he talks about the pandemic. He said it could have been a war, it could have been a pandemic, it could have been an outbreak of some sort. But he traces it all the way back to the beginning of America. So you start with the American Revolution. 80 years later, four generations later, you see the American Civil War. Mm -hmm. 80 years later, four generations later, you see the Great Depression and World War II. And out of each of those comes different generations. You have a generation of people who are innovators. You have a generation of people who make those innovative Mm. ideas come to life. You have a generation of heroes that deal with the crisis. And then you have a generation, which is where we're about to be now with your kids, Generation Mm -hmm. Z, who are the artists and the people who write and sing and write poetry about the crisis that took place. And so it's very interesting to look at the modern generations you have Generation X who makes the innovation. Generation or the millennials who are the heroes in this uh, in this crisis and put forth those things. Very interesting to look back at our past and see how those things played out, and kind of to see what's about to come up after this mm-hmm. pandemic. Hmm. Spoiler alert: the chapter on JFK's assassination and all of the like, just trail of things that happened after that. Fascinating. So, so good. This gives a lot of merit to uh thanks, Boomer. Thanks, Boomers. Ben, we know you're listening. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> All right, we good? Uh, yeah, yeah. We were we ever? Answer's no. Hey, this was episode fifty. Congratulations. We made it. Yeah. It's hmm. like an anniversary. Yeah. Should All right. Celebrate. Underwhelming. Let's see. Would fifty two be the because that's a year. No, we, but we, we, we're we, gone we past skipped some year. weeks. Uh, a year. I said yeah. an year. A year. Mm. Mm. Thanks for sticking with us. Oh.